All right, today's tutorial is gonna be um, determining the slope and the y-intercept from an equation, a table, a graph, and a word problem. So let's go ahead and start off with an equation. Here we got y equals negative 5x minus 3. And you guys gotta remember that the, uh, the generic form of the equation is y equals mx plus b. m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So all you do is you look at the equation. The, uh, the slope is going to be the coefficient of your x variable, which is negative 5 here. And, um, and then the uh, y-intercept is the constant, which is negative 3. And so the y-intercept is negative 5, sorry, negative 3, and the slope is negative 5. Let's look at example number 2. y equals 3x minus 5. The slope, what's the answer going to be? Well, it's going to be 3. And what's the y-intercept? Negative 5. And we kind of already learned that, so that's pretty, pretty basic. Let's move on to a table. Now, we've already learned how to figure out the slope from a table. Actually, we, in a way, but we've learned the rate of change. And so the rate of change from a table is going to be the same thing as the slope. And so let's figure out the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x. And so since 27 is getting bigger, it becomes positive, and it becomes positive 36. We're adding 36 as we go across. And once again, we're adding 36, and we're adding 36. So our change in y is going to be positive 36. Now let's figure out our change in x. Our numbers are getting bigger by 4 each time. So as you can see, we're adding 4 each time. So our rate of change is going to be positive 4. And so we're going to go ahead and divide 36 by 4, which positive divided by positive is a positive. And 36 divided by 4 is 4. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It is 9. And so the uh, slope is 9. So now let's go ahead and figure out the y-intercept. This is the new thing. In order to figure out the y-intercept, we're going to have to count down at our table. Remember, the y-intercept is the y-value when x equals 0. So if we look at our table, we got to count down when we get to 0. And so we are adding 4 to go the opposite way. To go backwards, we're going to have to subtract 4. And so 4 minus 4 will give us 0. And that's the value that we're looking for when it comes to the y value when x equals 0. So now we're going to go to the y values, and instead of adding 36, we're going to subtract 36. And that's going to give us the value of y when x equals 0. And so 27 minus 36 is negative 9. So our y-intercept, which is called the initial value or the starting point, is going to be negative 9. All right, let me go ahead and erase these so we can do the next problem. All right. Again, let's figure out the slope. It's going to be the change in y over the change in x. And as we're going on the y's, as we're moving to the right on the table, the values are getting smaller. So our um, rate of change is going to be negative. And so it ends up being negative 90. Our change in y is because it's getting smaller by 90 is going to be negative 90. Now let's figure out the change in x. As we're going to the right on the table, it's getting smaller. And so we are subtracting. So our change in x is going to be negative, and it's negative 10. So our change in x is negative 10. And so then we simplify. Negative divided by negative is a positive, and 90 divided by 10 is 9. So our slope is positive 9. Now let's go ahead and figure out the y-intercept. And so again, we need to count down. In this case, actually, we're counting up, if you really think about it, to where the value of x equals 0. And since we're adding, I'm sorry, since we're subtracting 10 when we go to the right, we're going to have to add 10. And when we add 10 to negative 20, we end up with negative 10. So we got to actually go one more time. And when we add 10 to negative 10, that's where we end up with 0. So we got to figure out the x, I'm sorry, the y value when x equals 0. So on the y value, we're going to have to move over two times on the table. Now, instead of subtracting 90 to the right, we're going to add 92 times. And so negative 173 plus 90 is negative 83. And negative 83 plus 90 is positive 7, so our y-intercept is positive 7. Now we're going to do a couple more of these problems in class. These seem to be the most difficult for some reason, but again, you're just counting up or down a table, just going the opposite way of the way you figured out the rate of change, or as we now call it, the slope. Now the last thing we have to do is figure out the slope and the y-intercept from a graph. Now, my graph is a little messed up, so I apologize ahead of time. So let's figure out the, the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is going to be up there. And let's imagine, let's pretend that, yeah, that's on the graph. And so the approximate value of that would be positive 9. 
and so our y-intercept is positive 9. So now we need to figure out the slope. The slope is the right, you know, what is slope, what is slope, rise over run, and so we make our slope triangles. So I uh, pick two points, um, I'm going to go up and then to the right, so it's going to be positive, so let's count how much. I went up positive 8, so my rise is 8, and I ran to the right 2, so my uh, run is positive 2, and then we simplify the fraction, and so we end up with 4, so our slope is 4. And in this equation, we just use what we did before, figure out the slope, make a slope triangle, and um, use the y-intercept, which we used when we were graphing. Let's look at the next example, problem number eight. Uh, same thing, find out the y-intercept. Luckily, in this case, it is on the, on the graph. Our y-intercept, if you look, is positive nine. I'm sorry, positive eight. Our slope, we're gonna make a slow triangle. Remember, slope is rise over run. And I'm gonna go down this time. I'm gonna go down, and I'm gonna go to the left. So that gives me a rise that is negative and a run that is negative. And so it ends up being a negative seven rise and negative two run and that gives me a slope of seven halves. So that is a quick tutorial on how we're gonna figure out the slope and the y-intercept. Some of it we've already done. Some of it is pretty easy and self-explanatory. Uh, just be careful and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you.